Welcome to Learn This Game, where you can learn about board games and how they are played. Today, we'll be looking at Terraforming Mars, Ares Expedition. In this video, there'll be a general description and overview of the game. We'll inventory the components, and we'll go through gameplay, including setup, sample turns, and victory conditions. In the description, there'll be some helpful links. There will also be a timestamp index so you can navigate directly to any part of the presentation. If you want to skip this introduction and go straight to the game setup and gameplay, you can go to the timestamp index now. If you find this video helpful, please like, subscribe, and share. You can also leave a comment to share your experience with the game or let us know what game you'd like to see reviewed. Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition was first published by Stronghold Games in 2021 and has three designers. In this game, you'll be controlling an interplanetary corporation with the goal of making Mars habitable. This game is recommended for ages 14 and older. The difficulty level is low to moderate and each game takes about 60 minutes to play. This game is designed for 1 to 4 players. This is a competitive game, but there are rules for solo play and for a 2 player cooperative mode. An app is not required and there is no standalone app. There are several expansions available including Discovery, Foundations, and Crisis. Ares Expedition is the card game version of an original game called Terraforming Mars. Gameplay in Ares Expedition is streamlined and takes less time to play than the original board game. Now that you've seen a brief introduction to the game, let's get into the game itself. Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition is an engine building card game that uses a board and tiles. Dice are not used. Thematically, it employs a futuristic science fiction theme in which corporations are competing to terraform Mars to make it habitable for humanity. Now let's see how the game is won. The winner is the player with the most victory points at the end of the game. You gain victory points for the following. You gain one victory point for every point you earn on the terraforming rating track that runs along the left and top of the board. You gain these points when you create oceans and raise the temperature and oxygen levels. You gain victory points equal to your forest victory point tokens, and you also gain victory points as indicated on the project cards you play during the game. Now let's look at the components. There is one 20 page color rule book. There is one four page quick start guide. There are four double-sided player aid cards which show the steps in each round and the steps in each phase. There is one game board. There are four player boards to keep track of current resources and production for each player. There are 208 project cards divided into green, blue, and red colors. The cards are numbered on the bottom right for inventory purposes. There are 12 corporation cards. Each player will be playing as one corporation. There are 20 phase cards. Up to four players receive five cards each. There are five double-sided phase tracking tokens to be placed next to the game board. There are 24 forest victory point tokens divided into denominations of one in five victory points each. There are nine double-sided ocean tiles. There are 52 player cubes broken down into 13 for each player in four different colors. There are two clear cubes for the temperature and oxygen tracks. Finally, there are 148 resource cubes. 100 are copper cubes which are worth one each. 24 silver cubes worth 5 each, and 24 gold cubes worth 10 each. Now let's set up the game for play. We'll be playing the two-player competitive version using the red cubes for player 1 and blue cubes for player 2. The rulebook has special instructions for the setup if you are playing the game for the first time, and also an optional advanced rule. For this playthrough, we will use the standard setup rules. First, place the game board in the play area. Set the phase tracking tokens next to the game board with the closed door side up. Phase 1 is at the top, descending in numerical order to phase 5. Set all of the forest tokens and copper, silver, and gold cubes next to the board. Next, place the two clear cubes on negative 30 degrees on the temperature track and 0% on the oxygen track. Next, shuffle the ocean tiles and place them blue side down on the nine ocean spaces on the board. Then, shuffle the project cards and place them face down to form the project card deck. You can split the deck into two piles to allow players easier access to the deck. Be sure to leave some room for a discard pile. Each player then places one colored cube on the 5 space on the terraforming rating track, also known as the TR track. 
We will also place the player aid card nearby to help us keep track of the game steps. Next, we'll set up player 1's area. The setup steps will be the same for player 2. First, we place a player board in the player's area. Each player has 13 cubes in their own color. Player 1 has already placed one of their red cubes on the TR track, leaving 12 red cubes. Player 1 places 6 cubes on the zero spaces of the 4 production and 2 capability tracks on the player board. The remaining 6 cubes are set aside for now. These additional cubes will be used when there are 10 or more production or capabilities on each track. Next, the corporation cards are shuffled and 2 are dealt to each player. Each player picks one to use for the game and discards the other. All unused corporation cards are returned to the game box. Each player receives the starting resources and abilities indicated on the corporation card. In this case, the red player starts with one plant production, so the plant production track is increased to one. Player one also receives 27 starting mega credits, which are placed on the player board in the appropriate area. Recall that the resource cube values are 10 for gold, 5 for silver, and 1 for copper. Each player is then dealt 8 project cards from the project deck. These cards are hidden from other opponents. Finally, we give each player a set of 5 phase cards corresponding to their player color. The player color is indicated on the back of the phase cards. This completes the game setup. We are now ready to start the game. Now that the game is set up, let's review some of the basic game concepts as we begin the sample playthrough. The game is played in a series of rounds, and each round has three steps. We'll go through all three steps during the playthrough. There are three parameters that measure how much Mars has been terraformed. They are temperature, oxygen, and oceans. They are tracked on the game board. The first track measures the temperature. The temperature starts at negative 30 degrees Celsius and can be raised 2 degrees at a time until it reaches 8 degrees Celsius. The temperature track is divided into four colors, purple, red, yellow, and white. Certain project cards will require the temperature to be in a certain color zone before they can be played. The next track is for oxygen. Oxygen is raised 1% at a time. The oxygen starts at zero and can be raised in increments of one up to 14%. The oxygen track also has four colors. The final measure is the nine ocean tiles. Each ocean tile represents 1% ocean coverage. These are flipped over one at a time to reveal ocean area. Flipping over all nine tiles will represent 9% ocean coverage. Each time you raise one of these parameters, you increase your terraforming rating by one on the TR track. TR points translate into victory points at the end of the game. Now let's review the player board. The player board keeps track of the player's current resources and production. The top of the player board shows the five phases. Next are the production tracks. Production tracks show how much of each resource you will gain during the production phase. Colored player cubes are used on the production tracks. When you gain production of a resource, the colored player cube is moved on its track. After you reach the 9 value, a second cube can be added to the right to indicate values for 10 and over. There are four types of production. The first is mega credits. This is the currency in the game and is used to play project cards and activate actions. The next is project cards. The third production track is for heat, and the last is for plants. The two bottom tracks show capabilities for steel on the left and titanium on the right. Some green project cards give players steel or titanium capabilities. They reduce the cost of playing certain other project cards. Next is the resources section. Whenever you gain mega credits, heat, or plant resources, you place copper, silver, and gold resource cubes into the section corresponding to the resource gained. When you spend these resources, you remove the appropriate number of resource cubes and make changes necessary. One important thing to keep in mind is that the production tracks on the left side of the player board only show your production capability, not your actual resources. You only spend and gain resources from the resources section on the right side of the player board. Finally, the bottom of the board shows the standard actions. During the action phase, players may perform as many of these actions as they want any number of times. There are a total of five standard actions. For example, this standard action shows that you can spend 20 mega credits to purchase one forest victory point token and raise the oxygen level by one step on the oxygen track. You will always be able to calculate your current production and capabilities by looking at your cards in play. The player board just makes them easier to track. Finally, there are three types of project cards. Project cards are the main elements to building your corporation. At any time, you may discard a project card in your hand to gain three mega credits. Project cards come in three colors. The green cards have resources that are gained in the production phase 
and have steel and or titanium capabilities which are used to reduce the cost of playing certain cards. Blue Project cards either have effects that trigger when certain things happen or actions that can be used during the action phase. Red Project cards have effects that happen immediately and do not provide any additional impact after they are played, other than the tags on the left side of the card that can be referenced by other cards. We will look at the cards in more detail during gameplay. Now let's start the first round of play. In each step and phase, all players play simultaneously. You do not have to wait for the other players before starting your turn. The first step is the planning step. Each player simultaneously chooses a phase card from their hand and places it face down. The phase cards are then revealed. These cards determine which phases will be resolved this round. A player is not allowed to pick the same phase card from their hand two rounds in a row. For each phase that was chosen, we flip the corresponding phase token face up. These will be the phases resolved this round, starting with phase 1 and proceeding in numerical order through phase 5. Although players will be resolving phases simultaneously, phases must still be resolved in numerical order, starting with phase 1. Let's start resolving phase 1 by examining the phase 1 card. The abilities section shows that each player may play one green project card from their hand. The bottom of the card shows the bonus that may be claimed by the player who selected this phase card this round. In this case, to pay three fewer mega credits for the green card played this game. If both players had played the same phase card, the phase card would still only be played once by each player and not twice, but both players would be able to use the bonus. Let's look at player one's hand to see what green project cards are available. There are two green project cards in player one's hand. Each card has a title and a picture to show how it can assist in terraforming Mars. In the upper left corner is the cost of the cards and mega credits. We can see on the player board that we have 27 mega credits available, so player one can afford either of these cards. The left side of the card shows the card color and its tags. Each card can have up to three tags. The first tag on the economic growth card contains the building symbol. This refers to the steel production capability on the play board. If the player had steel production, they would receive a discount of two mega credits per steel capability. So for example, if player one had one steel capability on the steel track, the cost of the card would be reduced from 10 to 8. The discount is shown right above the steel capability track. The tag on the Astro Farm card is the space tag and refers to the titanium capability track on the player board. Player 1 would have received a discount of 3 mega credits towards the cost of the card for every point on the titanium track. Like the steel track, there is a reminder printed right above the titanium track for the discount. Since there are no titanium points, there is no discount available for the Astro Farm card at this time. The bottoms of the cards show the purpose of the cards. The economic growth card will produce three mega credits during each production phase as indicated by the Roman numeral four and the orange color. The Astro Farm card will produce one plant and three heat during each production phase. There is also a lightning bolt message which indicates that player one can place two microbe resources on another designated card if available. The lightning bolt icon indicates this action is only taken once when the card is played. For this turn, player 1 elects to purchase the economic growth card. The cost of the card is 10 mega credits, but because player 1 played the development phase card, they receive the bonus of paying 3 fewer credits for the card. So player 1 will keep the Astrofoam card in their hand. Player 1 then pays 7 mega credits from their player board to purchase the card. Then the cube on the mega credit track is moved up 3 as indicated on the card. The card is then placed on the player's tableau. In order to save table space, you can place green cards along the bottom of your play area and overlap the cards so that just the production box and tags are showing. You can then play blue cards in a new row above the green cards, and you can overlap red cards in either row. Now let's look at player 2's area as they resolve the development phase. Again, the players would be performing these phases simultaneously. Player 2 has three green project cards in their hand. Recall that player 2 has 28 mega credits to spend. The balance portfolios and farming cards both have special requirements before these cards can be purchased and played. The special requirements are also explained on the bottom of the cards next to a check mark. The card cannot be purchased and played if the requirements are not met. In order to play the balance portfolios card, player 2 must spend one TR point by moving their cube down one space on the TR track on the main game board. The farming card requires the temperature on the game board to be in the white zone. Currently it's in the purple zone, so player 2 cannot play the farming card at this time. The Balance Portfolios card and Farming card have numbers on the right side which indicate their victory point values. 
These are added up at the end of the game. Player 2 decides to play the Adapted Lycan card. The cost of the card is 6 Mega Credits, but the bonus of paying 3 fewer credits does not apply since they did not play the Development Phase card this turn. 6 Mega Credits are removed from the player board to pay for the card. The card produces one plant resource during the production phase, so the cube on the plant track is moved up one space. The card is then placed on the player's tableau. That completes Phase 1. Players now proceed to complete the research phase as indicated by the yellow phase card. Each player will draw two cards and keep one. Since Player 2 played the phase card, they will get the bonus of drawing three additional cards and keeping one of them. In other words, drawing five cards and keeping two. The discarded cards are placed face down on the discard pile. Player 1 draws two cards and decides to keep the blue fish card and places it in their hand. The other card is placed face down on the discard pile. Player 2 draws five cards and keeps the red bribed committee card and the blue artificial jungle card and adds them to their hand. The remaining cards are placed face down on the discard pile. This ends the resolve phases step since all phases have been completed for this round. The phase tokens are then flipped back over to show they are no longer active. The last step is the end step. Players must discard down to 10 cards in their hands. For each card discarded, players gain 3 mega credits. Since both players have fewer than 10 cards in their hands, no cards are required to be discarded during this step. That completed the first round. The next round starts with the planning step. Starting with the second round, players place their next phase cards at a 90 degree angle on top of their previously played cards because a player is not allowed to play the same phase card two times in a row. After revealing the new phase cards, the previously played phase cards are placed back in the respective player's hands. The corresponding phase tokens are then flipped over. Players will start with the Phase 2 card, then play the Phase 4 card. Player 2 will receive the bonus on the Phase 2 card since they played it. The Phase 2 card indicates that each player may play one blue card or one red card. Player 1 has three red and three blue cards. All cards except the blue Brainstorming Session and Development Center cards have requirements that prevent them from being played this turn, so they'll be kept in the player's hand. Player 1 decides to play the blue Development Center card and keeps the other card in the hand. This card costs 7 mega credits and has the science and building tags. Since the capability track on the player board shows 0 for the steel track, player 1 does not get a discount for the cost of the card. The bottom of the card shows that when the action phase is played, this player may spend 2 heat resources to draw a project card. Player 1 spends 1 gold cube and receives 3 copper cubes as change. The card is then placed in the player's tableau. Player 2 has 4 blue cards and 3 red cards. Player 2 decides to play the Artificial Jungle card which costs 5 mega credits and allows the player to spend 1 plant resource to draw a project card during any action phase. The cost is deducted from the player board by spending a gold worth 10 mega credits and receiving change in the form of a silver cube worth 5. The blue card is then placed on the player's tableau. Player 2 elects to draw a project card as their phase bonus and adds it to their hand. Now Player 1 has to resolve the production phase. Player 1 gets to obtain the bonus since they played this phase card this round. So Player 1 adds 4 mega credits to their player board. Player 1 now refers to the production tracks on the player board starting with mega credits. The production track shows 3 mega credits can be produced during this phase. This is added to the player's value on the Terraforming Mars track on the game board. Player 1's cube is on the 5 value. So player 1 produces a total of 8 mega credits which are added to the resource area on the player board. The project card track is at 0 so no cards are drawn. The heat track is also at 0. The plant track does show a production value of 1 so a resource is added to the player board. Player 2 then resolves the production phase by performing the same procedure. The mega credit track is at 0, but player 2's cube is on the 5 on the TR track on the game board. So 5 mega credits are added to the player board. 3 heat resources are added and 1 plant resource is added. Player 2 does not get the bonus for this phase card since it was played by player 1. That concludes the resolve phases step. Players now complete the end step by discarding down to 10 project cards, gaining 3 mega credits for each card discarded. At this point, both players have fewer than 10 cards, so do not have to discard any. The phase tokens next to the game board are flipped back to the closed door side. 
This concludes the sample turns for this game. This sample playthrough should provide a good overview of how to play each round. You will need to refer to the rulebook for questions about the different symbols in the tags and how to handle additional items such as microbes and animals. Here are some additional points to keep in mind. When resolving the action phase, you see what project cards in your tableau have action boxes, which are colored blue and have the Roman numeral 3 at the top of the box. In this example, you can spend two heat resources to draw a project card during the action phase. You can also take any of the standard actions as listed on the bottom of the player board. An important rule to keep in mind, if you are able to spend heat or plants for a standard action, you must do so unless the parameter is already maxed out. You may resolve any number of standard actions any number of times, but you may only perform the action on the project card once, unless you receive the bonus which allows you to take one additional action one more time. Also keep in mind that in order to pay for a card, you may discard other project cards for mega credits. In this example, if you wanted to play the Development Center card, you would need seven mega credits. You could discard three project cards for three mega credits each for a total of nine, and receive two mega credits in change. Or you could discard one or two cards and pay the rest in existing mega credits from your player board. When you acquire forest tokens, you can place them in your player area. They are not placed on the game board. Each forest token is a victory point at the end of the game. Also remember that each time you flip an ocean tile, raise the temperature, or raise the oxygen level, you get to move your cube up one space on the TR track. And when you flip over an ocean tile, you get the rewards listed on the bottom of the tile. In this example, you would gain one mega credit and one plant resource which you would add to your player board. So let's recap the victory conditions. In the competitive 2-4 player modes, the game ends when all three terraforming parameters are completed. These are raising the temperature to 8 degrees Celsius, raising the oxygen level to 14%, and flipping over all nine ocean tiles. The player with the most victory points wins the game. Here's an example of how a player would tally the victory points at the end of a game. Let's see how player one could have done. First, player one gains a victory point for each point on the terraforming Mars track, which in this case is 15. Player one also acquired three forest victory point tokens, which total three victory points. Finally, player one would add their victory points on all of their project cards played on their tableau. Not all project cards have victory points. In this case, the player has a total of 10 victory points on their project cards. This provides a grand total of 28 victory points. All players calculate their victory points accordingly. In case of a tie, the tied player with the most heat, mega credits, and plant resources added together is the winner. There is also a solo mode. In the solo mode, you will not be playing for victory points. Instead, you'll be playing against a dummy hand of phase cards, and you win if you meet all three terraforming parameters before the end of 25 rounds. However, you can keep track of victory points also in order to compare scores between solo games. The solo rules only occupy one page in the rulebook, so once you learn the basics of the game, adapting to the solo mode should be a quick process. This concludes this review of Terraforming Mars Ares Expedition. Visit us at these sites and don't forget to leave a comment about your experience with this game, or let us know what game you'd like to see reviewed next. And if you'd like to experience something more exciting than conquering a planet, or even working for a corporation, stick around for our disclaimer. Coming up next! Uh -huh.